Hello YouTube and hello Ninth Age communities. This is Alex with Evershade Gaming here to bring you another battle report. Today we've got another game of Mysorian Ancients versus Jason's Sylvan Elves. In preparation for strength and numbers, just wanted to get another game in here with the Saurians and try to figure out what I'm doing. So uh, we played a 4500 point game using the .204 version of the beta rules. And uh, let's get right on moving into the army lists. So right here we've got my Quadalor General BSB. Uh, running alchemy and pyromancy, since you can see down there I've got the essence of the free mind. He's wizard master with the grasp of the immortal, so he can get that plus one to cast as well as the plus one to channel. And then symbiosis, so we can make better use of our engine of the gods down below. And they've got an extra binding scroll just in case we need to cancel out a magic phase. In core, we've got 28 Soros warriors with a serpent totem for the extra fight and extra rank stack, as well as plus one agility. We've got spears, we can be a maximum of agility five when we get charged. Full command with a flaming standard to synchronize with that alchemy, if we ever take that, as well as any kind of regen that you end up seeing on enemy units. Then we've got a unit of 16 skink braves, no command or anything, just for capping an objective or just sitting back and conserving a little bit of points. In special, we've got a unit of 5 raptor riders with a musician for capping an objective or just harrowing a flank. We've got 22 temple guard with full command and a rending banner for holding that quaddle and just being a really excellent grinding unit. And we've got five chameleons, two spearbacks, uh, two packs of one salamander each, an engine of the ancients, as I mentioned earlier, and a single torosaur with a great bow. So, um, pretty small list as I've played in the past here, but um, I'm pretty hopeful that uh, it'll do pretty well conserving its points. And with Jason's list here, he's got a sylvan prince, he's got a bow, uh, he's a pathfinder kindred, and he's got the bow of whiskin for that plus one to wound. In addition, we've got a Druid General. He's a Wizard Master with a bow. He's got the Heirloom for that extra hereditary spell. A Talisman for a little bit of protection from a miscast or something. And then he's taken Cosmology this time, which I think is really good since he's been focusing a lot more on his shooting lately. And the spell from Cosmology that affects your shooting aim score is just going to be really helpful for him here. Uh, then he's got a Thicket Shepherd BSB with Toxic Spores to give his Thicket Beast some lethal strike, which will be extra useful against my army with all that armor I'm packing. He's got three 11 packs of Sylvan Archers with Musicians, and then a five pack of Heath Riders with a Musician also. I think this is probably one of the best ways to kit your core for Sylvan Elves right now, just maxing out on all the shooting you can, but also keeping like a stealthy, kind of really fast objective capping unit. In his special, he's got the six Thicket Beasts with a Champion. He's got two Eagles, two Tree Daddies, and a unit of 10 Pathfinders for his Prince to sit in. So. I think this list is absolutely excellent, and Jason's done a great job of refining it. We played the Frontline Clash deployment with the Spoils of War objective on map 6. And as you can see, um, if you guys like this, I can do this again in the future. But I've basically got the map set up here where you can see the 12-inch deployment lines, as well as where the objectives are placed along the center there. I had won the roll for table side, so I went ahead and picked the side with the hill, the impassable terrain, and that wall there, as I'm pretty much thinking I'm going to hole up in that bottom right side, and then move out into the center field to try and cap that middle objective and the right one, since I can maybe hide a unit behind the hill and keep him from charging me, and counter charge if I need to once I pick up the objective. And I'm also just thinking it's going to be really difficult for me to grab that objective next to the forest on the left-hand side, because his Thicket Beasts are just going to be all over that. Here's what the field looked like before we did any deployment. Here were my spells. I uh, went ahead and picked as much damaging spells as I could possibly pick. And then here were his spells from Cosmology. Going into deployment here, you can see the only things that I've got on my left flank are going to be those Skinks just hiding behind the hill all game, and my Salamander there that I placed. And then we've got the other salamander on the other side of that wall. We've got the unit of raptor knights behind that. We've got a large unit of source with spears. On the other side of the hill, we've got those two spearbacks. We've got the large unit of temple guard with the quaddle in it. And they've got both of the torosaurs hiding behind that wall, just to protect them from any early game shooting. Going back into his deployment, he's got one unit of archers hiding behind the hill on the far side. He can see he placed his forest down right next to the other forest to make that left objective even harder for me to get to. He's got an eagle sitting behind that tree father. Then next to that, he's got all of his thicket beasts hanging out in the water, not like they care. He's got another eagle in front of that, another tree father, another unit of archers, another unit of archers, and then a 
a unit of the Heath Riders on the far side of that building. He has his druid holed up in that central unit of archers, so he's got the best ability to use that ice and fire, and can span most of the board with his spell ranges. And for scouts, you can see that we placed the pathfinders inside of the neutral forest, and then I placed my chameleons behind the hill, but also as close as possible to one of the tree fathers, so he could open up on them if I had the first turn. But that wasn't going to happen, because he had basically plopped, he knew what he was doing, and being a heavily shooting army, he really wanted to get that first turn. And speaking of, let's go right in the first turn. He moved everything really aggressively, moved everything as far as a possibly could. You can see he's barely touching the hill with his two units of archers there, just so they can see over and just start unleashing those bow shots. In his magic phase, he got the number six card, and he just moved that forest with his veil token. He had to touch the heart on one of my salamanders, and used forest embrace on one of his uh, units of archers, just to protect them in case I tried to charge them. In the shooting phase, the Pathfinders opened up on the Salamander and just completely annihilated him. And the Chameleons took a single wound from the Entwining Roots from the Tree Father. And then the two units of Archers just both opened up on the Chameleons and completely annihilated them. And did a single more wound to a Salamander. Going into my turn one, I moved everybody up. I got the Raptor Knights out of the way so that the uh, Spears would be able to move up and counter some of the aggression from his Tree Father and from his Thicket Beasts. Since I had the Flaming Standard on that unit, I pretty much figured that my Spears could probably take anything he threw at me, especially since with that Agility 5 when he charges me, I'm going to be going before everything but his Thicket Shepherd. In addition, you can see I moved the Salamander on the left to try and breathe onto the Pathfinders, hoping I'd be able to deal some significant damage there. I moved both the Taurosaurs up on the right to try and take that flank and make sure he moved away from it. In the magic phase, I got a Scorching Salvo off and made one of the units of archers panic. And we breathed on the Pathfinders, but only dealt a couple of wounds, unfortunately. The Spearbacks shot at one of the units of archers, but only dealt a few wounds there also. And then we went right into his turn two. My thinking with the Raptors, even though I know I was moving really close to that Tree Father, was that even if he charged me, I'd be able to flee and they wouldn't be that bad. I could flee into that corner, and I could then reform on a next turn, and I'd be able to counter the movement of those Pathfinders. Unfortunately, that was not the case, because when I fled from the Tree Father following his charge, I rolled a 12, the only thing that I could have rolled to make them fall off the board. And that's exactly what happened. So I lost that 300-point scoring unit, second turn of the game. Sucks. And this is what everything looked like after movement was all finished. He'd moved his Pathfinders down into my deployment zone, just basically out of the sight of everybody. He's probably going to unload on that Salamander and just completely obliterate him. And if not, onto the Saurus themselves, maybe in the Spearbacks. And he, unfortunately he's got his Tree Father blocking the Thicket Beasts, but everyone's kind of positioned in there really weirdly, and close enough to that forest that my Saurus really don't want to be charging in there. In his Magic Phase he got the number one card, but it must not have been too significant because we were right into shooting here and I think it was the entwining roots from the tree father that killed the salamander and then the pathfinders went on to kill those uh, spearbacks completely and then we went right on into my turn too. I did not do any charges unfortunately as as I'd mentioned the positioning of all those guys around the forest made it really difficult for me and it was too far for my temple guard to try and charge the tree father. So everybody just moved right on up trying to make him a little more scared, maybe trying to reconsider whether or not he wants to charge me. And here's what everything looked like on the whole table after movement. In my magic phase, I got the number three card, and I got a fireball off on the archer unit that has the druid in it, as well as the extra plays, and a spark of creation off on one of the tree fathers to deal a wound there. There was no combat, and no shooting anymore, unfortunately, other than the giant bow, which just kept missing. So, we're going to move right on to his turn three. He went ahead and charged my spears with both his Thicket Beasts and the Tree Father, and chaffed up the Temple Guard with one of his eagles, moving another eagle right behind the Saurus to move in front in case things go awry. And he got the two card in his magic phase. He got Touch the Heart off on one of my Taurosaurs. He got Ice and Fire off as well. 
and I stopped Forest Embrace because there was no way I was letting him have that on his Thicket Beasts. In shooting phase, he just went ahead and panicked my Skinks away with those Pathfinders. So then combat rolls around, and man, the Tree Father and the Thicket Beast just completely opened up on my Saurus. Even though I got the turn to strike before they did, I just could not do any damage to these Thicket Beasts. He was making his ward saves like a beast. And he ended up killing, looks like I only have 7 models left, so he must have killed 21 Saurus there. Ugh, it, it just did not go very well for me whatsoever, and as you can imagine, I didn't even get a chance to stick. So, I fled away, but thankfully, as you can see, I fled one inch farther than he pursued, and his tree father there just bonked right into the rock. Unfortunately, they went too far for my Taurus or Engine of the Gods up there to be able to see them, so I couldn't counter charge. In my turn three... Unfortunately, the Saurus could not make their Leadership 4 and just popped right off the edge. In the Magic phase, I got the number 6 card, and I cast a Bubbled Flaming Sword from the Taurus Sword to help everybody out. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any damaging spells off this phase. And this is what the board looked like at the end of turn 3. Since I didn't have any more combat to do, I was just kind of repositioning to counter his movements in the next movement phase. And then in his turn 4... You can see he went ahead and charged one of my Taurosaurs, the Engine of the Gods, with his Tree Father. Since I've got the Flaming Swords on there, I'm thinking, hey, maybe I'll have a chance in this combat. Maybe he won't just completely obliterate me. And he just moved everybody around. He got his archers on the left flank there to sit on top of that objective. So now he's got two of the markers picked up, which is going to make it especially hard for me. You can see he's got a couple of dice there down on his Thicket Beasts. I had managed to do three wounds to his BSB in combat with the spears, but uh, I was thinking like, hopefully I was going to have another round and I'd get to strike again, but that just didn't get to happen. Going into the magic phase, he got the number four card, but it must not have been too effectual because we went right into combat here where he just completely steamrolled Stegadon before he even got a chance to do any real damage. Then into my turn four. Went ahead and charged the eagle, of course, and then countercharged the tree father with my other torsor. Magic phase, I got the number four card. I got a flaming sword off on my temple guard, thankfully, and I also got a scorching salvo off, which not only brought one of the archer units to a single model remaining, it also made his druid's unit of archers flee away, and made the heath riders flee as well. In combat, I just rolled right over that Tree Father. I think it was just the impact hits that did it too. The Taurus Sword didn't even get to strike. And then I reformed, and this is what everything looked like at the end of turn four. Top of five, he went ahead and charged my unit of Temple Guard with his Thicket Beasts, and then repositioned his Tree Father behind the units so that my other Taurus Sword could not see him and charge him. And then everyone just kind of moved away so that the Scorching Salvo wouldn't be able to affect them. He got the number 5 card in his magic phase. And got a touch the heart off on the Taurosaur. And in the shooting phase, just completely obliterated him. In combat here, you can see I took quite a few losses from my Temple Guard, but we're still staying there, thankfully, with the Bodyguard. And... In my turn 5 magic phase, I pulled the 8 card, which is going to be pretty useful since this is when I'm going to need my magic the most. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a flaming sword off or really anything since I'm in combat here and I don't have my engine of the gods anymore. I've only got two spells I can actually cast, the Scorching Salvo and the Flaming Swords, and he was able to stop both of those. So after combat, I've only got six models left, but you can see I was able to kill his BSB, so that's a small victory at least. Going into his turn 6... Just kind of moved everybody around, made sure there wasn't too many people still in salvo range, and moved his tree father behind the rock just in case. Uh, he pulled the three card for magic, and got an altered sight off on my temple guard to reduce their skills, so now he's hitting them on threes. And unfortunately, he was able to wipe out all the temple guard, and my quaddle fled from combat, but thankfully, in my turn six, he went ahead and rallied, I unleashed all the magic I possibly could when I pulled that 7 card and dealt some more damage with a Scorching Salvo onto the Archer unit which made the Druid flee again at the end of the game so I could pick up those points at least. 
and that was it. So, um, at the end of the game, I picked up half for his Druid Master General, because he was fleeing. I picked up the Thicket Shepherd BSB. I got half of a unit of archers, because there was only one model left. I got one full unit of archers, because they were under a quarter and fleeing. I got two of the eagles, and I got one tree daddy. And Jason picked up my entire army, except for the Quaddle, which, surprisingly, only left him with a 614. So, that represents that my Quaddle's actually worth, like, three points, which is huge. But, considering he's both the general and the BSB, you can imagine how many points he's actually worth. And when we modified for objective, the end result was a 3 for me and a 17 for Jason, which is a real big win for him. Overall, I gotta say, Jason's list was really excellent, and he played it like a pro. I really have very little I could possibly suggest to him. He was worried about cosmology going into the game, since he didn't have too much experience with it, but I'd say it worked out really well for him. As far as me, um, I don't know. I made a couple of really big screw-ups. I know my deployment wasn't very good. But just in general, I feel like the matchup wasn't amazing for me. I feel like, because he outranged me in a lot of cases, it was really tough, since I don't have the bodies to deal with. The Thicket Beasts especially, they just kind of ran me over. I didn't really have a solution for them, other than getting in combat with them. And since he kept the Tree Fathers next to them the whole time, it was really scary for me. And also, because we had that centrally placed forest, it was really hard for me to advance on them, since he could just have sat in that forest the whole time if he had wanted to. So... Thanks again for the great game, Jason, and I hope everyone will catch us next time. Thanks for watching.